Hi guys and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review. Now I'll be honest, I'm not too sure what I'm reviewing yet. Um, <laughs> bit of a weird approach. Uh, what I do know is that it will be Wolfburn. So Wolfburn Distillery. Um, basically I recently took part in the Somerton Whiskey Festival 2021. Um, or the first one, I believe there's going to be one later in the year as well. I did also take part last year and basically for helping out, I was very kindly sent this from, from the guys at Wolfburn. So thanks to Dan for the shout out there and to Wolfburn for sending these samples through. This is a selection of four single malts. So it's got Northland, Aurora, Morven and Landskip. Now, the reason I say I don't know which one to, to review is because, hands up, I've never tried Wolfburn before. This is the first time that I've tried Wolfburn. I did get some miniatures for last year's festival, um, but I didn't get around to trying them, basically. Time got away from me. So, we've got the Aurora, the Northland, the Langskip, and the Morven. Morven? Morven? <sighs> decisions, decisions, man. Decisions. Um... Let's see. Let's go for Aurora. I'm just guessing. I just like the sound of it, Aurora. So, we're going to go with the Wolfburn Aurora. There it is, guys. Natural colour, non-chill filtered, 46%. The reason I know it's non-chill filtered and natural colour, because it very handily says it on the back. And I really wish more distilleries would just put it where you can see it, like these guys are. So, what I know about the Aurora now that I've just taken it out of the box. What do I know about Aurora? So, Oloroso Sherry Cask and X Bourbon Cask Matured. So, got a nice Oloroso and Sherry mix. I probably should have looked at the descriptions on the back first, but I like the, the random pick. Bit of living on the edge, if that is living on the edge. So... Wolfburn is a very interesting distillery in the sense that it is the most northerly distillery in mainland Scotland. That was a title previously held by Pulteney, of all Pulteney fame. So, no longer are they the most northerly mainland Scotch whisky distillery. I mean, imagine that, that's like been part of their marketing for, for years. You know, it's like, oh yeah, we're the most northerly distillery in mainland Scotland. And then you can just hear, like, circular saws and cranes in the distance. You know, what's that? Um, so, I mean, Wolfburn have been going for a few years, obviously, because they've got whiskey now. Um, I believe that their entire range is natural colour and non-chill filtered, which is very, very positive. I have been meaning to try more of their stuff, because I see them pop up on social media quite a lot. Um, I know that they've got some very, very unique releases. They've sort of like done a few charity releases as well with uh, like Help for Heroes, which is a charity that I very, feel very strongly um, about. And, you know, it's always great to see newer distilleries on the scene. There's so many Scotch whiskey distilleries that have opened in the last five years. There's been a massive boom, massive boom. And at the same time, you've got the English distillery scene that's been, been taken off. You've got the Irish whiskey scene that's reflowering. Um, is that a word, reflowering? I don't know, but we'll see. So anyway, back on to this, the Aurora from Wolfburn Distillery. Nice sort of light gold in the glass there. That does scream more ex-bourbon to me than sherry, but I suppose we don't know the type of sherry, or have I already said Oloroso? Yes, Oloroso, so more than likely refill, given the colour on that. So some nice slow legs on the glass that have gone down there as well, on the nose. Wow, interesting. Initially, there's a very fruity hit at the front. Sort of imagine like a concentrated raisin, which by definition, that's what it already is, because a raisin is a basically dehydrated grape but it's really intense, which is surprising considering, if you look at the colour, all right, there's been all the rest of sherry in the mix, but you wouldn't imagine that you would have that kind of intensity on the nose in that kind of richness. There's a lot of nuttiness in there as well. I think there's like a blackberry kind of jam vibe as well. 
but it's very, very fruity. But then, for me, the ex-bourbon starts kicking in with its spiciness. There's a bit of vanilla. Arguably a little bit of soapiness in there as well, like lemon washing up liquid. But it goes very quickly. It becomes creamy. There's that spiciness again. And a little bit of green apple. Very crisp, very crunchy, very fresh, slightly sour. Mmm, really, really nice. There's also a bit, this is going to, this is going to sound daft and quite specific, but if you've ever eaten shreddies, right, and you've let them go a little bit too far where they become a bit mushy, it's just sort of like this milky, cereally, wheaty mess. It's a bit like that. Right at the back. Hmm, there could even be a slight hint of smoke. I don't know if this is a peated release or an unpeated release because, again guys, I've not done any research here. I'm literally just looking at the back here. I believe that Wolfburn use some peat in their mash. Peated malt in the mash. But I don't think they do that for every release in the sense of making it a peated whiskey, if that makes any sense. You know, I'm not talking like Lefroig. A lot of the time, peated malt is thrown in there to give it some depth, some balance, some richness. Really nice nose, that. I keep going back. And some honey as well. Mm. Right, so again, the legs are still coming down there. Really nice indeed. On the palate. light, becomes richer, very spicy, into the finish on the tip of my tongue is tingling like I've just licked a, a chilli, but it's not unpleasant in that way. You've got a lot of that sweetness that I mentioned from the nose coming through, we've got some sweet milk chocolate, we've got caramel, we've got those raisins again, we've got a bit of nuttiness again. Lovely mouthfeel, really nice texture. Yeah, honey again. We've got that nice kind of rich oiliness. It's really assisting that spirit to adhere to my gums and my tongue, which really enriches the experience. Mm, it's kind of like toast, like really buttery toast with that honey. And again, the kind of fruitiness, the richness from the nose as well. Really nice. Mm, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I've not had this on my radar before. I am. That. Oh, on the palate, maybe a little bit of that, that peat coming through possibly. If it is even peated, I'm not too sure. But to me, there is a hint of it in there. A little wisp of smoke just as it goes into the finish. Mm. Gives it another dimension. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really nice, really enjoyable. Wolfburn Aurora. There you go. Very tasty indeed. And I think that's part of, of my problem, and probably shared by a few others as well. It's sometimes. Try to decide what whiskey to drink on any night can be a challenge, but try to decide what whiskey to buy next can often be difficult as well because there's so much variety at the minute in Scotch and English and Irish and world whiskies outside of that scope. Everyone's doing a lot of good things and they're doing them right. And there's, you know, I, I complain about pricing sometimes, but ultimately, as Matt on the Dramble pointed out, points out quite regularly actually. I think nowadays we live in quite, quite a fortuitous period for whiskey because there's a lot more affordable quality whiskey around. You only need to look back at core releases. Like the Boona 12, like Boona Half and 12 is a fantastic drum. 
for me, I know I bang on about it all the time, the Deanston 12, I love it and I always have a bottle of it on the shelf. There are those limited releases that draw your attention like the little, little jewel um, that you can see glinting at the bottom of the seabed thinking that you found some, some treasure. Uh, but it turns out to be maybe an old shell or something like that. But they tend to divert your attention away and you get that FOMO thing where you're just like, right, I've got to be on at six o'clock in the morning because I need to pick up this whiskey. I'm going to spend a hundred quid on it. Yes, yes, I've got one. Is that going to give you much more enjoyment apart from, in some senses, the thrill of the chase? I'm not too sure and I'm trying to pull back from that myself. Aurora isn't one of those kind of FOMO releases because I think it's readily available. And I think, having seen it, I'm pretty sure it retails at around 40 to 50 quid around that price point, which is there or thereabouts for a lot of, lot of Scotch whiskies. It's no age statement, I get that, but it is going to be younger spirit. They've, on, they've only been going since about, I think, 2013, 2012, something like that. Maybe, maybe a little after that. Um, I will update in the comments with a little bit more information about Wolfburn and a couple of links. This was just an impromptu thing. I was walking walking down the stairs to do the review and I had something in my mind as to what I was going to review. And I saw this box at the top of the stairs and I just picked it up and I was like, do you know what? I want something a little bit different and just kind of winging it a bit. I'm glad I did because that is very, very tasty. Very tasty indeed. So guys, I'm going to box it off now. Um, if you don't all already, you know, feel free to subscribe. But as I always say, I'm not precious about it. Don't worry if you don't want to. I'm on Twitter at Maltbox. Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey, and obviously I also do reviews and opinion pieces over on the website maltboxwhiskey.com. Thanks for watching, see you soon.